Hey, I'm Brian, and welcome back to the Critics' Corner. Today, we are talking about Phoenix Comic Con 2017. Fiasco or Beautiful Con? You be the judge. Today, I have uh, my guest with me is my lovely girlfriend and fellow... Hello. Fellow uh, YouTube host, Nola. And we're going to talk about Phoenix Comic Con today. So, where do we want to start? Well, there's so much to talk about. Obviously, you know, there was the, the thing that's on everybody's conversation, which is which the, was the attempted the, shooting. The, yeah, well, the yeah, the guy that walked in with what was it? Three handguns, a shotgun, and a bunch and of a knives bunch of and knives, ammo. Yeah. And uh, and he got in. And he got in. And it could have been a disaster. Luckily, disaster was averted. So that's I think something that we need to to keep in mind. Yes. But I think that a lot of it starts before that. I've been going to Phoenix Comic Con for at least 10 years now. Uh, my first Comic Con, I was a in, uh, guest invited to uh, judge the masquerade. And uh, so I was given a free pass. I really just went in and did the masquerade and I came out and I was like, this looks like a really good con. I, I want to start going. I had no idea because it was already pretty big back then. I have noticed that security in the last five years instead of getting tighter, which is what security is doing everywhere else, has actually been getting more lax. It has been getting more lax. In fact, I noticed this Thursday, the first day, at least the first day we were at the convention, that, yeah, it's like you walked in the door, and, and yeah, there was the guys sitting over there in the corner with the table that said peace bonding, but they weren't, like, making you go over. They were just, like, sitting over there, and you basically went over if you wanted to. And, yeah, you could, like, walk into the convention center... And, and walk all over the place uh, without a badge, really, unless you like specifically started heading towards the actual programming rooms mm -hmm. or the or specific those. dealer's yeah. room like that. But you could walk all over the lobbies and everything mm -hmm. with pretty much carte blanche. I feel that this year was a little bit more lax than it has been in previous years, but I feel like that it has been getting more and more lax as the convention has gotten bigger. It is, it is harder to to go through everybody's bag and, and go that. But I remember like five years ago when we first went, mm -hmm. they looked through our bags and all of that stuff. Yeah. And and everybody that walked in pretty much had to go through that. And uh, and and that was completely absent this time. I don't know how it worked. I don't know if the convention pays the convention center and they hire out the security. I, I don't I don't know but but the security has definitely gotten more lax over the years the thing about the convention that makes it more of a target is you have the big-name actors yes and people you know crazy people are attracted to actors mm -hmm. because it makes them feel important and special I okay. guess so they could have had a disaster but the right people did the right things you know, the person who knew the person called, they spoke up like they should have, uh, and the right people got contacted, and the cops got there, and they got the guy, you know, they got him. They arrested him. You know, everyday citizens are just as important stopgap yes. measures in this kind of thing that security guards are, because a security guard, I don't care if you have, you know, 500 security guards, if you've got 100,000 people, you know, you have to rely on your everyday person to be vigilant. Yes, yes you, you do. You know, that's what Mad-Eye Moody would say, constant vigilance. Yep. And I heard that, that somebody did try and stop him in security, and he ran off. Yeah, I think I heard that I too. heard that. I don't but know, I don't if know that, how true that yeah, is Yeah, I don't know not. how true. I mean, so much rumor. Is yeah, and that's one around. of the problems when you get something like this going on, is mm -hmm. the rumor mill starts, and, you know, you don't, you don't know what you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Quit. Which I think is kind of part of the issue with the convention, and we're kind of dovetailing into the reduced staffing of the convention. Right. Uh, from what I understand, when you are a for-profit business, you are only allowed by per the IRS to have so many volunteers working for you. Now, the standard model for most conventions is that it is almost entirely staffed by volunteers. Mm -hmm. And this convention was no different than that. The, the main difference is, is that the owner of this convention makes a profit on it. 
when you talk 100,000 people at about, fifth, let's say, $50 a person, yeah. you know, I, I think that, that money is being made. If you're only breaking even, you're not doing something right. <laughs> right. Yeah. So there is money being made here. Um, and that thing, making money is fine. Like, I yeah. have no problem making money. I think that anybody that uh, can can build a convention up to the huge success that Phoenix Comic Con is, is is a genius. I mean, it's big kudos to that. But I know that there was an issue with staffing, and I think that, that so the staff was cut almost in half, maybe even more, yeah. because of it. And, and there was a big controversy surrounding yes. that, too. So, that, so there was already controversy sort of swirling around Phoenix Comic Con this year. And then this unfortunate event happened with this psycho. And, uh, you know, and so that led to the, the heightened security issues. Yes. Which, you know, you have a situation like that, yeah, you're going to clamp down on security or you're going to look like a fool. One of the biggest problems, of course, with that was the, the changes in policy. And, yes. And that wasn't, I think, their fault. It, I think it was difficult. I did receive the official emails, but the official emails didn't say what was going on. They just said, in light of recent events. And so I didn't know if they were talking about, you know, the terrorist attack in Manchester, or something that happened six months ago, or, or what. And then, you know, after it, it, I had to go basically hunting around to find out that someone had been arrested while I was there at the convention, because we were there that mm -hmm. Thursday morning. Because at first they said, okay, absolutely, no yeah, props yeah. whatsoever. Anything that you carry in your hand is a prop. You can't have it. Yeah. And then gradually overnight they, that seemed to, to pull back. Some of it I heard was the Phoenix Police Department insisted that they make these security changes. I also heard that they suggested these security changes. Yeah, and there you go. You're back to the rumor mill because <laughs> no one's really telling you what's really going on. And I think that that is kind of the thing. I My big issue with the convention as I experienced it because of the lack of personnel or the cutbacks in the personnel, the lack of real communication that was going on was just like nothing. Right. Then they ended up with these huge lines on Friday, yes. uh, getting into the convention, and uh, and there was a lot of a lot of mumbling and grumbling about that. I think a lot of people understood that you know you you want to be safe, yeah. um, but on the other hand, it was a lot of you know okay here we have to stand outside in the heat in Arizona in the summer. By the time we got there Friday afternoon, though, we were only in line for about 20 minutes. Yeah, and that's okay. I don't yeah, have a that wasn't with that. even a problem. I think that they did the right thing. I think that scaling back the props ban from every single prop to to gun just props. gun, you know, weapons props yeah. was was a very reasonable change. The biggest problem I think that happened after that is once people got into the convention area. Then they stayed, they stayed in the convention there. area. They didn't go back and forth. They didn't go in and out. Uh, and like I said, part of the rumor mill was that they had to go through security between buildings. Right. Which then led to things like on Saturday when we were doing the Dick Van Dyke stuff, uh, we were all up in there in the uh, big the hall floor. on the third floor. And they shut the third floor down. They were not letting any more people go up to the third floor. And I, a big issue with, or a big problem, I think, was that people were going into the building and not leaving. Like, I didn't figure out until the middle of Saturday that they had shut down the area between the two buildings so that you could walk freely between yes. the two buildings. And once I figured that out, I was like, wow, that was brilliant. Like, I yeah. wish I'd have known. Um, well, and that's one of the issues with Phoenix Comic Con and and a situation like this is because it's in two different buildings. Really three. Three different buildings, yeah. Because the Hyatt buildings. had the gaming area, yeah. and you know nobody's really talked about this, but there wasn't any security going into the Hyatt as far as I know, no. and there was a whole floor of gaming going on. Yeah. Anybody... Now maybe I shouldn't say that, because maybe somebody's going to look at this and go, oh my gosh. <laughs> 
Now we have to have security going into the hotel. Yeah, but yeah, because nobody, nobody I talked to or nobody I heard talking said said that there was any security at all at the gaming area. Yeah. Mm -mm. Um, now we did hear uh, about one of the the talent who left. Yes. Uh, one of the talent apparently left to get lunch, left the building, and then uh, when she came back, she had to go through the long security line. They didn't have a special line for, you know, guests. So when she got back, she ended up missing her panel and left. And so that's unfortunate. Yeah, so you got to wonder, you know, is that going to start to show to badly on the convention? Because that's the last thing we need is having... You know, talent going back and saying, "Oh, I'm not going to Phoenix Comic Con ever again because I got treated like crap at the security line." Hollywood is a tiny, tiny oh, place. Oh yes, and they talk. Oh, they do. Yeah, yeah. Everybody in Hollywood talks to each other, and yeah, you don't want to get any kind of thing like that going on.